Go into our, uh, go into our work. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, girls. Well, tonight we are, uh, tonight we are continuing and ending our study in the, the book of First John. Um, it's been an awesome couple of months. It really has for me. I hope it's been for you guys too. I thank you for, you know, continuing with us, uh, coming on with us. Um, it's been a blessing for me and I pray that it's been a blessing for you guys too. Um, so tonight we're going to be reading from verse 13 and ending it with verse 21. Um, so those are the verses we're going to be reading tonight. So I encourage you girls, um, get a notepad. Uh, this is some important stuff. Get a pencil, get a paper, your Bible, your phone, however you guys do it. And uh, read along with me. Study along with me. Uh, write down these scriptures. Um, you know, I encourage you girls all the time. Don't take our words for it. You know, we're just, we're, we're just men. We're just human beings. Um, the word is what has life, has life and it, it comes to life when you read it, when you study it. Uh, like I said in my prayer, I'm nobody. Uh, I never thought I would be able to do things like this. And I thank the Lord that he used all of us in a mighty way. Um, and it's and it's easy. It's it, it it comes when you ask for it, when you ask the Lord to bless you with it. it he he blesses um, his children with it. Uh, so I'm going to read our verses and um, then we'll go back and we're going to break it down verse by verse. So first John 513, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life. To those who commit sin that do not lead to death, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Of the evil one, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So those are the scriptures. So going back to verse 13, girls, the first thing we see here is the reason John wrote this book. So John tells the church, I write these things to you <coughs> who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So we go through this, girls, every time we, we started the book of 1 John, we mentioned this to you. He wrote this to the believers, to, and this is to know that you have eternal life. Um, these things in First John, all these things that we went through, they were a test. They were to see, are we fellowshipping with the Father? Are we in the truth? Um, and John's writing this to a church that's suffering, um, suffering from people coming into the church, Gnostics coming into the church and trying to deceive them. So he's writing this to them and saying, I'm writing these things to you to sh to, that you will know that you have eternal life. So am I living and, o and obeying and abiding by these words um, in this book? And most of the words that uh, John is writing is from the Gospel of John. He really mirrors the Gospel of John um, because he was with him. He says in the starting of John that I touched him, I, I, um, I dwelt with him, I handled him, I was with Christ. Um, so he's giving us that, that assurance there. Um, and the reason John is writing this book is not to be deceived by false prophets, by false teachers. Um, like I said, the Gnostics. 
um, he talked about the testimony of Jesus as we, as Tiffany um, did last week. He talked about the testimony of Jesus in the last verses, making sure, um, look, this is what you believed in. So he's saying that Jesus came, he died, um, and whoever believes this is born of God. So he's giving us the, he's making sure, look, this is your, this is your hope, this is your salvation, this is your confidence that you have in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Um, this is something amazing, girls. John's gospel, the gospel of John, was written to move readers to faith in Jesus, um, that they may receive eternal life. And I want to read that real quick. <clears throat> so this is why the gospel of John was written. And it says in uh, John 20... Uh, 31, verse 31. It says this. Okay. Uh, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So it's saying right there, uh, at almost the end, it's the purpose of this book. At almost the end of this book, I'm writing these things to you that you will believe in the name of this, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that you'll have life. And then we see, girls, like we just seen in verse 13 of, uh, of chapter 5 of 1 John, <clears throat> this letter was written to those who have believed that they actually, to, to show them that they actually possess the priceless gift. So the Gospel of John was written that <clears throat> that you will receive eternal life, that it was written to assure that they believe, and this is to make sure that you possess this gift. Am I a believer of Jesus? Am I following? Am I fellowshipping with the Lord? Uh, God bless you, Stephanie. We just started, so you're good. Um, so that's verse 13, girls. Now, verse 14, and I'm going to read verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. So we see here, girls, we see in the Bible, when Jesus prays to the Father, he has confidence when he prays. And there's a scripture I want to show, show you, girls. It's in John eleven forty one, And look at this. John eleven forty one, So they took away the stone, and this is the raising of Lazarus. So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. So what did Jesus say there? I know that you hear me, and I know you always hear me. And look at what verse 13, girls, this is the confidence. So John is telling us to have the same, the same confidence here in John. This is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The same way Jesus prayed throughout, we see in Jesus' prayers, that he always prays, not my will be done, Father, but your will. Just like he prayed in the garden. Um, before his death, before going to the cross, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Well, John, the epistle of John is telling us to have that same confidence in asking um, according to his will. Amen. Um, so the whole thing here, girls, is according to his will. Um, sometimes we get caught up in like, <coughs> and I know this, you know, I'll pray for certain things. Well, Lord, bless me with this. Lord, bless me with this. And then when it doesn't come or when I don't receive what I prayed for, I'll say, well, Lord, what happened? But the problem is, girls, sometimes we're not praying according to his will. Um, so it's important to uh, pray according to his will. Um, and really, you know, Lord, I don't want what would make it better for me. I want, Lord, what pleases you according to your will. He knows what's best for us, girls. He's not going to... He's not going to bless us with something that's going to hurt us. He's not going to give us something that's going to destroy us. He's going it, to, it's according to his will. He's the perfect father. He's the good, good father. So everything is going to 
be in perfect alliance with him and his work. Um, and the root of our confidence, girls, is found in our salvation. In the, uh, in the Lord, he also commands us to be obedient. Um, so our confidence is found in, in our salvation, in our, in our um, being sealed with the Holy Spirit. This is where our, our confidence comes, that we can ask anything. And I want to read uh, John fifteen seven. <coughs> fifteen seven says this: If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Um, so the whole thing here, girls, it's if you abide in me. Um, Sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll pray and we'll, we'll ask God for things, but are we abiding with him? Are we fellowshipping with him? Jesus says right there, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever. Um, it, it's a call to be obedient. We're called to be obedient children. Um, in 1 John 3.21, we see that more like more clear. 1 John 3.21 says this, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Look at that. If we, um, if we keep his commandments. So what, what is that? It's showing, a, it's showing being obedient children. It's showing um, discipline. It's showing having fellowship with the Lord. Uh, keeping his commands and the, it's really making it clear there girls if we do this um, he hears us he hears our prayers um, so we see that we have to be obeying God we have to be obeying his word we got to pray according to his word does our prayers line up with the word of God because uh, like I said God is not going to give us something that's going to hurt us in the long run sometimes what we pray for what we want will hurt us in the long run so Amen. He always answers yes, no, or wait. Amen. Um, so verse 16, girls. So it's in this context of prayer. We got to remember that. It's in this context of prayer. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life. To those who commit sin that do not lead to death, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. So... Like I said, girls, in this context, we see it's talking about prayer in these, in these verses that we read. So John is telling us to pray for our brothers and sisters, making the point here that we do sin. Um, throughout his Bible, throughout the, the letter of John, we see that. And we see that at the start in 1 John 1, 8. He says this, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Um... So it's showing that we show that we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. First John 2, 1 says this. Um, I know it's a lot of verses, girls, but I want to remember the, the, the context of the whole book of John, not just what we're reading tonight. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. So right there. girls uh john is clearly showing us yes we do sin but we don't make a practice of it and uh, if anyone does sin we have an advocate we have um that that's another word for a lawyer we have we have um jesus christ that we can go to and ask our forgiveness thank you lord um and we find also um something like john 5 let me go back to it where it shows praying for the brothers, we see this also in James 5.14. And it says this, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if anyone has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Um, so there, just like John was showing us, James is showing us to pray 
um, for our brothers and sisters uh, that are sinning. It's not one in particular sin, um, but we pray for the saints. We pray that the Lord would um, the Lord would um, perform the sanctification process in our life. So we got to remember that, girls, to pray for one another. Um, <coughs> so now moving on to um, the second part of verse 16. It says, there is sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. Um, now this is a little bit more of a harder, a harder um, part of this verse. Um, now I'm going to give you, there's two distinctions of this verse. There's two outlooks of this verse. Um, one outlook is that it was physical death. Um, that that's one outlook that that's one view that people, uh, that people believe that's what, uh, John is talking about here. The sin that leads to death, that it's physical death. And then there's another one where it's, um, it's, it's more of a spiritual thing. That's kind of what I hold to also. Uh, and I'm going to get into that one a little bit more. I, um, I encourage you girls, study it on yourself. If you guys come up with anything, you know, let me know. Um, study it for yourself. See what you guys get. But this is what I was leaning to more, uh, the spiritual aspect of it. Uh, so I'm going to go through that now. So what does that mean? There is sin that leads to death. Well, like I said, let's remember why was he writing this book? Why was John writing this book? He was writing this book to believers. It clearly says that I'm writing this to the church of believers. Um, why? Because there was people, false prophets, false teachers coming into this church. <coughs> um, so who was he talking about when he, when, he, when he said this? Beware of these false prophets, these antichrists. Um, we've seen that in 1 John 2.26. We're going to go back there. And I like because we're kind of getting like a whole overview of what, we, uh, of what we did in these past couple months. So 1 John 2, 6 says this. Whoever says he abides... Wait, hold on. 1 John 2, 26. Nope, wrong one. Okay. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. So he's saying there is people trying to deceive you. And they were in the church. But the... But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and no lie, just as he taught you abide in him. So what does John make clear there? I'm writing, these, I'm writing to you um, because there are people who are trying to deceive you. And we also see in 1 John 4, he also talks about them that were uh, them that were deceiving them. First uh, John four two and three. <clears throat> By this we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that that does not confess that Jesus is not from God, this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. So what the, through those two verses, girls, we see that, well, there's people in the church that's trying to deceive them, which is the Gnostics. Um, and then we see that whoever does not believe that Jesus Christ came into the flesh, um, they are Antichrist. They're, they're denying Christ. An Antichrist is anyone, sorry, girls. An Antichrist is anyone that denies that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus came into the flesh. Um... So that there is no, and the Gnostics, something that they did was they said that there was no real incarnation and no divine savior. So believing that way, they believed that there was no, there was no divine savior. There was no, Jesus didn't come in the flesh. There was no humanity of him, that he wasn't human. Um, and this girls, this is the sin that leads to death um, because they don't believe in the truth. Uh, it's a refusal of the gospel. Because to believe in the gospel, we have to believe that Jesus came down from heaven, born of the virgin birth, put on flesh, died, and resurrected. So you have to believe in those things in order to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, you have to believe this to have life. So if somebody does not believe in that, what is it? It's something that's leading to death. Um, so I believe, girls, my outlook on this verse is... It's for um, 
the people that are not that are not of us. They went out from us, like John said, they went out from us because they were not of us. They're not true believers. They're, these are the antichrists, the the false prophets, the false teachers. Um, and this is something I want to show you. Look at what John. So to believe in the gospels to have life, right? So look at what John. 824 says, and this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. John 824 says this, I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So what did he say, girls, to the to the Pharisees right there? Unless you believe you will die in your sins. Uh, there, I believe that he's talking about a spiritual spiritual death. They will not have life. Um, to have life is to believe in Jesus Christ, to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where our life comes from. So right there we see, well, look, there we're going to die, just like the people in First John. Uh, so now that we see that there's sin that leads to death, it's the refusal of the full gospel what they were doing, they were they were refusing. They weren't accepting the full gospel. Uh, so now that we see that, why does it say not to pray for that person? Um, you know, I what what I thought is, are we supposed to pray for everyone? Are we supposed to pray for the whole world? Uh, look at this. This is amazing. Look what God tells Jeremiah in uh, Jeremiah seven sixteen, and this is the Old Testament. Jeremiah seven sixteen says this. As for you, he's talking to Jeremiah, as for you, do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer for them and do not intercede with me for I will not hear you. Well, who was he talking about here, girls? He was talking about the, the evil people of the world that were, um, that were believing in false gods. They were, uh, <clears throat> they were believing in, um, they had idols, they had false gods. Uh, they didn't believe in God. They weren't worshiping the true God. They were worshiping other gods. And then we see also in Jeremiah fourteen eleven, he says this. The Lord said to me, do not pray for the welfare of this people. Who is he talking to here? He's talking about false prophets. Um, don't pray for them. They're, they, they, they believe a lie. They're, they're, you know, they're gone. So how do we take it today in, in our days? Well, we're called to pray for the brothers, the believers, but the false prophets, the antichrist that don't believe in Jesus, the full gospel, those are the ones that um, the, you know, the word is telling us not to pray for. Uh, we also see this in, um, in John 17:9. Uh, Jesus says not to pray for the whole world. John seventeen nine. John seventeen. John seventeen nine says this. I am praying for them. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Those are the believers. Um, he's praying for them. So now we see that there's a clear definition. Um, there's also a clear definition in 1 John 3, 4. We're going to go there. I know it's a lot of scriptures, girls, but to understand the word, we, you know, we have to go through the scripture, interpret scripture. So 1 John 3, 4 says this, And everyone who hopes in him purifies... Hold on one second. Okay, um, so we see a clear definition of this, John, 1 John 3, 4. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. And everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness, and you know that he appeared in order to take away sins. In him there is no sin. So we see that there's a clear definition. The believers in Jesus don't don't um, take on practicing of sinning. We talked about this a few weeks ago in, uh, in the book of John. 
um, there's a difference in practicing. What is practicing? Making it a, it's making it a habit. It's constantly doing it. <clears throat> um, so let's go back to First John 5. Okay, so... All wrongdoing, this is verse 17, all wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who is born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. So those, uh, those unbelievers, the ones that the sin leads to death, there's, there's a clear distinction in telling a believer, like John says, I write these things to you that you'll know that you have eternal life. And an unbeliever. Uh, First John also talked about, well, you're, you're sons of the devil and the sons of God. Uh, the sons of God are the ones that do not uh, practice sinning. <clears throat> and we see that we no longer want to sin because we don't want to hurt God. Um, a believer does not longer practice sin, um, not because anything we could do, not on our own strength, because they don't want to hurt the Father. Uh, and we see that he protects us. And um, so look at what verse 18 said. Hold on. And, okay. And we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. So it's showing the Lord's protection. So look at what John seventeen twelve says. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not, not one of them has been lost except the son of, dis, of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So we see there that Jesus uh, is praying to the Father, and he's praying that I, I prayed for them, and uh, you, you guarded them, you protected them. And it's the same thing now, girls. The Lord protects us uh, from the evil one that First John, uh, that First John is talking about. He chose us out of the world, and he protects us from from the lying weight of the of the of the devil. Uh, and let's go now to verse nineteen. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Uh, we are all following now before girls it says that the whole world is lying um, it lies in the power of the evil one um, we see the scriptures in Ephesians that uh, we were all at one point following the prince of the power of this era we were all lost and dead in our sins um, like first John is talking about but he's showing here that well we're we're chosen we're wrong and out of that uh, God made us alive um, and we no longer lie in the power of the evil one. But there, there is. Um, <clears throat> so me, I believe. Um, so me, I believe that he's showing, like we went through verse 16, girls, he's showing, look, these people are doing wrong. These people are deceiving you. These people are not your brothers. Um, you see by their fruits that they're not, they're not of us. Um, and then also in Galatians 1, 4. Let's see. Galatians. Uh, where are you? Okay. Galatians one four says this: Who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present a evil age, according to the will of our of our God and Father? Um, we see that he broke that bondage of sin and debt. Um, he gave us a new heart. Um, 
He took us out of that. He delivered us from this, from this, this, um, from this evil that we were in, um, this evil world, this evil age. He took us out of that and he gave us, um, he got rid of the heart of stone and gave us a new heart, gave us a new life. Uh, so now we're going to go to verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Um, <coughs> he gives us understanding. Uh, I love this, uh, that, it, you know, this verse says he has given us understanding that we can know him, um, that we can know the truth. Um, because before the, before God has given us a new life, before he raised us from the dead, we didn't know the truth. We were, you know, we were in, um, Blinded uh, from the gospel, from the word of God. And Luke 24, 45 tells us that. Luke 24. Luke 24, 45 says this. Then he, re, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Uh, and this was to the disciples. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. So even there, it was a work of God. He had to open our mind to understand Without him, without his understanding, without prayer, we would never understand this. When we were dead, we would never understand his word. Um, so he has given us understanding. And knowing him is eternal life. Uh, John 17, 3 says that. Um, go read it real quick. I know we're all familiar with the passage, but I'm going to read it. John 17, 3 says this, And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Um, so this is eternal life. To know uh, the one true God. And Jesus Christ, he has given us. He has given us eternal life. By renewing our mind. By opening by opening our mind. Giving us understanding. Bringing us back from the dead. Um, that, that is eternal life. Amen. Uh, and then the last verse, girls, is little children. Keep yourselves from idols. So this is the last. Why does John um, Why does John end with this? Well, anything, anything that is not the truth is an idol. Anything that you put before God, anything that you claim as truth um, is an idol. Uh, what does Jesus say? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, and then look at what... Like we was talking about earlier in verse 9 of uh, 1 John 5, it says this, If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he was born concerning his son. Whoever believes in the son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has born concerning his son. Well, what was the testimony that God bore concerning his son? Well, like we was talking about earlier, it's, it's the gospel. Uh, the gospel is um, that there was, there was, we had no, for first of all, before you get to the good news, you got to get to the bad news. We had no hope. We were dead in our sins and our trespasses. Um, you go back to Genesis, because of one man's sin, uh, Romans 5, Romans I think it's, I don't know, God, God forgive me. Um, but we go back to Genesis. It says uh, that Adam sinned, and then through Adam, Romans talks about it, through Adam, uh, through one man's sin, uh, all have sinned, and all uh, have are dead in our sins and our trespasses. Ephesians talks about it. Um, so we see that we had no hope. We were, we were dead and um, buried by our sins and our trespasses. No hope. Um, so the testimony is that God loved the world and he sent, sent his son into the world um, to put on flesh, to become human, um, to live, live in this life. And then he took, he lived this life. Um, he went through this life for the 33 years and then he went to the cross and took our sins, took the wrath of God. Um, it's, the Bible tells us that we are all uh, children of wrath um, for, the, for the day of wrath, that we all deserve this wrath. We all deserve the punishment that Jesus took on the cross 
That's what we deserve. That's the punishment we deserve. But no, Jesus came into the world and took our punishment, took the wrath of God, took the full wrath of God upon the cross. That's the greater testimony. Amen. We are all enemies of God. Um, <coughs> enemies and haters of God. Um, we never longed for him. When, when we were at our worst, that's when Jesus Christ came and died for us. When we were dead, um, like I said, Jesus Christ took the rat, died upon that cross, took the beatings, took the, the slappings, the slander, all of it, took it for us. That's the greater testimony. But not only that, he died, but then three days later, he resurrected to give us new life, um, to give us that confidence, um, to give us what First John is talking about, that eternal life, the truth, um, the understanding uh, all of this, um, the confidence, Jesus Christ died, resurrected to give us um, a new life, a new hope, um, and no longer in the, in the lies and the traps uh, of the enemy of this evil world. Uh, so thank the Lord for that. So that is the true testimony. That is the greater testimony. No testimony of what these false prophets and these deceivers were telling them. Um, that wasn't it. No, this is the testimony that John, John wants you to, to know. And look, you believe in this, you believe in the name of the Son of God, you have eternal life. Um, and this is why he wrote this book. So glory goes to God, girls. That's our study. 